This is a story about people of vision. True Texas pioneers in a land of sun, drought, solitude, and broken dreams just across the borderline. These are the elements that, according to Spanish folk traditions, create the ideal habitat for something that has been distinctly Mediterranean for millennia. But these elements are also found in abundance in South Texas. Near the U.S.-Mexico border, where vaqueros once roamed freely, a new breed of Texan has carved out a niche in a place that, at first glance, gives one the sense of sun, drought, solitude, and broken dreams. But underneath this land lies a great aquifer, an underground lake three times the size of Connecticut, where a liquid gold that has illuminated history is planted, picked, impressed. Olive oil. Like the pioneers who developed South Texas, the olive tree has an almost titanic resistance an inner force which renders it nearly immortal. Despite harsh winters, burning summers, abuse and neglect, they continue to grow, with gnarly trunks and branches reaching proud and strong towards the sky, like the weathered face and hand of an old cowboy. And it bears fruit that inspires, nourishes and heals the body. When early Texas pioneers discovered water was in abundance underneath their ranches in the early 1900s, these modern Moses carved up their vast holdings and converted it to farmland. They leased, sold, and speculated to a horde of poor farmers from the east and south. These Anglo newcomers formed the basis of what was one of the greatest land migrations in the United States history, forever changing the demographic makeup of the region. And they all came by train, on tracks paid for and laid by the big ranchers to their magic valley of South Texas. The railroad was king, and the key to transforming desolate ranches into fertile farmland. Really pumped. I mean, actually, I think Texas carries a, a brand name you know, not only within the state of Texas, but, you know, throughout the entire nation. Yeah. That's why Texas has pride within yes, itself. Yes, England. indeed. And it's not going to produce a bad product. Yeah. Overnight, little farming towns like Dilly, Cotula, Artisha Wells, Katerina, Asherton, Carrizo Springs, Big Wells, Crystal City, and La Prior sprang up, developed by Texas ranchers like Asher Anderson, Joseph Cotula, Charles Taft, brother of U.S. President William Taft, and the Strait brothers, whose great-grandson, George Strait, continues to ranch in that area. So then you had the cattlemen come, and then as you had water, the river was a flowing river. You had farmers. These towns formed the basis of what became known as the Winter Garden, where fruit, vegetables, and even some wine was harvested and shipped back to the big eastern cities of Chicago and New York, via the same rail lines the new farmers rode in on. He was doing great. For some reason or other, it caught fire and burned to the ground. I think he gave it away to my father because he just wanted to leave. But when the stock market crashed in 1929 and the Great Depression hit, almost all the farmers, with no markets to sell their crops to, and many overlagged by the banks, lost everything. The winter garden reverted back to ranch land, the lush fruit and vegetable gardens succumbing to a landscape of scraggy mesquite trees and prickly pear cactus back to a land of sun, drought, solitude, and broken dreams. Until a few years ago, when Texas olive pioneers Jim Henry, Jack Doherty, and a few others discovered that liquid gold 
could be gleaned from this South Texas land that was on the same geographic parallel as the Mediterranean. Olives could be grown in Texas. Here is a crop that grows in Texas and this is what Texans can make of olive oil. Jim Henry's inspiration to plant olive trees in the winter garden came from seeing a few old olive trees that had been planted in the 1920s by Asher Anderson's son, Granger, behind the historic Bell Asher Mansion in Asherton. Now, Jim's struggle and determination will manifest in a fall harvest of 400 tons of olives from 40,000 trees planted at his Texas olive ranch in Carrizo Springs. This inspired 95-year-old Paul Conley to plant an olive orchard on land in Asherton, his farm since 1911. I'm in hopes that the planting of these olive trees and the spending of money back in this country for agriculture will catch on and revive this whole country like it was back in the early days. I hope that some of these days soon that this country will revive, whether I'm around or not. And motivated David and Beverly Anderson to try and produce olive oil on their farm in Dilly. Jerry Farrell is growing olive trees on his big ranch in Cotula. And Dick and Susan Hansen are in the process of planting 140,000 olive trees in La Prior along the historic Winter Garden rail lines. Texas Olive Trails tells the story of an endless source of wonder, the fountain of wealth and power, and one of the world's great commodities, olive oil. And it's about people that persevere against the odds who, driven by a romantic notion, seek to revive this magic land in South Texas called the Winter Garden. There's a land so I've been told Where every street is paved with gold And it's just across the borderline When it's time to take your turn There's one lesson that you must learn You could lose more than you'll ever hope to find Just across the borderline And you're still just across the borderline